The out-of-Africa theory contends that modern humans, armed with the latest high-tech long-range projectile weapons, migrated from Africa into the Near East, then on to Asia, Australia, and finally Europe, eradicating all native species of humans who stood in their way. But did our evolutionary relatives vanish suddenly because modern humans were elite survivalists engaged in a bloody colonization, or did the replacement happen more gradually or for other reasons? For instance, Homo sapiens would have been a lethal foe they had improved linguistic abilities, and the ability to solve problems using mental symbols. As the rest of the living world has learned to its detriment, a creature equipped with symbolic abilities is a formidable adversary, and not necessarily one that is entirely rational. It was possible that the mentality was to shoot your arrow first and ask questions later. Indeed, there is something incredibly strange about the Homo sapiens sapiens species. We have no living brother and sister species to share our world with, unlike other animals. Coyotes have foxes as siblings, tigers have panthers, whales have hippos, and moose have elk as siblings. Today, we are the only intelligent, bipedal, and talkative primate on Earth. What's more, the suspicious lack of human fossils found during the most significant period of human evolution is one of the greatest mysteries of human evolution. Excarnation is the term used to describe the practice of removing the dead person's flesh and organs prior to burial in anthropology and archaeology. Excarnation can be accomplished naturally, such as by butchering the corpse by hand or leaving it out in the open for animals to scavenge. Some societies removed the bones for burial after excarnation. Excarnation has been used for tens of thousands of years all over the world. The Awash River Valley in Ethiopia contains the earliest archaeological evidence of excarnation, dating back 160,000 years. Even though the skull's morphology shows ancient characteristics that are absent from later Homo sapiens, they are still considered to be the ancestors of modern Homo sapiens sapiens. The three most complete skulls, one of which belongs to a six- to seven-year-old child, have human-made cut marks and other alterations, which may be proof of excarnation or other mortuary practices. Along the undersides of the sphenoid and temporal bones of the juvenile skull, there are deep cut marks indicative of defleshing which most likely occurred after the jawbone was removed. The Herto people lived in the midst of rolling hills and verdant valleys, where the customs and traditions of the ancestors were deeply cherished and faithfully upheld, and they believed that the proper treatment of the deceased was crucial to ensure a smooth transition to the spiritual realm. Similar to the funeral customs of some Papuan tribes, the occipital bone and foramen magnum, the base of the skull, were broken into, and the edges were polished and smoothed off. These might suggest that Herto Man was symbolically preparing the dead through a ritualistic burial process. Earlier hominids, some of whom cut flesh from skulls but apparently did not polish or decorate them with scratch marks, performed different funeral rites than the Herto people. The researchers concluded that the people were moving the heads around on the landscape, because the Herto skulls were not discovered with other bones from the other bodies, which is unusual. We have no way of knowing why they did it, whether it was as part of a cannibalistic ritual, but they most likely cut the muscles and broke the bases of some skulls to extract the brain. Experts assert that the discoveries are comprehensive enough to categorize them as early modern humans, because they exhibit our species' distinctive globular brain case shape and facial features. However, both of the adult skulls are enormous and strong, and they also resemble earlier Afro-Eurasian fossils. For instance, the Galilee skull, which was found in the Cave of Robbers in the northern Levant, is one of the most significant hominin fossils in the Near East. Its estimated age of as little as 200,000 years is determined by correlating its archaeological context with other, dated layers. Initially, it was referred to as Neanderthal in various studies, even as a potential ancestor of Central European Neanderthal populations or an ancient Neanderthal that was distant from the more contemporary Amud and located close to Shanidar I or Taban I. Ultimately, the Galilee skull has a number of characteristics that make it a truly fascinating specimen, including a number of signs of a flat face. With the expansion of the West Asian hominin fossil record, as well as advances in dating and general knowledge of the evolution of human groups in this region, the interpretation of the fossil has been evolving for almost a century. Given that it is older than the majority of the known West Asian hominins, their assignment to the Neanderthal lineage is therefore less common. The most thorough metric analysis of the skull to date identifies a generalized morphology similar to the Arago 21, Neanderthals from southern France, 
the Shanidar 5 Neanderthals from Iraq, and the Skull 5 anatomically modern human from the Levant. The skull's characteristics point to a population that gave rise to both modern humans and Neanderthals, though it is also possible that it represents an early Neanderthal lineage since it most likely predates the split between these two lineages. Some research even completely dissociates it from the Neanderthal clade and views it as a transitional period between Homo erectus and the modern human population represented by Skull and Kafzeh. Hominin fossils found in the Eskul and Kafzeh caves are known as the Skull Kafzeh hominins or Kafzeh Skull early modern humans. As some of the earliest members of their species in Eurasia, they are now categorized as Homo sapiens. The remains display a blend of characteristics common to anatomically modern and archaic humans. Using electron paramagnetic resonance and thermoluminescence dating methods, they have been estimated to be 80,000 to 120,000 years old. Although they have a brain case that resembles modern humans, they have brow ridges and a protruding facial profile more akin to Neanderthals. At first, they were thought to be a stage between anatomically modern humans and Neanderthals, or hybrids between the two. According to a recent theory, the school, Kafzeh hominids represent the first exodus of modern humans from Africa around 125,000 years ago, likely via the Sinai Peninsula, and their robust features are actually more similar to those of archaic sapiens than Neanderthals. School 5 had a wild boar's mandible on its chest. The prominent superorbital ridges and protruding jaw are visible in the skull, but the modern human brain case is rounded. When it was first discovered, it was thought to be an advanced Neanderthal, but it is now widely believed to be a modern human, albeit a very robust one. The body of a teenager, roughly 13 years old, was discovered in a pit dug into the bedrock as Kafzeh 11. The large red deer's antlers were clasped to the chest in the hands of the skeleton, which was lying on its back with its legs bent to the side and both hands placed on either side of the neck. There were also numerous hearths, a number of human remains, flint artifacts, including side scrapers, disc cores, and points, animal bones, including those of a gazelle, horse, fallow deer, wild ox, and rhinoceros, a number of seashells, lumps of red ochre, and an incised cortical flake. The marine shells were transported 35 kilometers away from the Mediterranean seashore. Although the Galilee skull is not a Homo erectus fossil, I believe it exhibits a majority of primitive traits, especially if we now consider a flat mid-face to be a primitive rather than a modern trait. It may, therefore, be early in the Homo sapiens lineage, like Jebel Erhoud, or it may be close to the Neanderthal, sapient, and Denisovan ancestor. The Galilee skull's traits, however, set them apart from modern people and Neanderthals and place them more closely in line with the morphology of Middle Pleistocene hominins from East Asia, such as Jucudian. Paleoanthropologist Roberto says believes that this connection between East and West Asian hominins calls into question the distinct African origin of modern humans like Herto Man, who lived around 200,000 years ago. Nonetheless, we have been viewing the demise of Neanderthals as a historical accident by chance for far too long. Instead, where Neanderthals and modern humans were unable to coexist, their extinction may have been the result of the first and most successful deliberate colonization campaign of the modern human race. However, despite his reputation for animalistic savagery, the man of Neanderthal was not some prehistoric brute, he was an intelligent species and his extinction took a bloody long while.